Hi everybody, my name is Kim and welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks. Welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks where my husband is in the background dancing in the kitchen because he's cooking fresh lamb. Today Dan and I worked with a local butcher in Chicago and broke down an entire lamb, which the yield was like probably 40 to 50 pounds of grass-fed, finished on grain lamb from a local farmer, which is pretty awesome. Anyway, I am here today to talk about my February wrap-up and tracking where I am on my TBR unwrapping goals. So as you guys know, I started the year by wrapping my TBR shelf. I wanted to invoke some really, f I love the idea and I love receiving books as gifts. So unwrapping them brings me a lot of joy. So I have, t oh, a hundred, I have tons of books on my physical TBR shelf that I really wanted to get down in 2021. So I wrapped them all, you can check the link and know where I started from. But to recap, and I'm moving over to give myself some room for stats, I started the year with 85 books on my TBR unwrapping shelf. I have unwrapped 10 so far. I have unwrapped two for March, four for February and four for January. I actually finished all four of those books for February. It's the 28th, coming in right at the finish line. I finally finished my last book. So let's start there. What were the books I read in the month of February? So the four books I unwrapped, The An Edible History by Tom Standage. I have his other book, A History of the World in Six Glasses, and I was really hoping that this would follow a very similar format. Uh, it really didn't. This is very, f what do I mean by that? The A World in Six Glasses, each chapter was dedicated to one of those beverages. I very much thought the edible history of humanity was going to take the same approach. Looking back now, this was published first and then the, the World in Six Glasses came second. This very much is a linear, 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 I can speak, a linear food history. So you go through the invention of farming all the way to modern times. So is this a bad book? No, I just prefer his more recent work. I think this is a great introduction to food history. It really talks about how food was used before monetary value became a thing. Your wealth was how much food you had stocked up and saved, because when famine was around, you were gonna survive and the peasants weren't. So good book, just not my favorite. So I don't do star ratings anymore, but I'd say it was just okay. Another book I read this month and I really loved, second favorite of the month is Savage Feast. This is a memoir by Boris Fishman, Three Generations, Two Continents and a Dinner Table. I read this on, I listened to this on Scribed and really enjoyed it. I love memoir and family lineage. I also love the role of food in families of immigrants. I am a child of an immigrant and I think food has a very different meaning for those for, for immigrants, the cultural impact, and what it really means. Second favorite book of the month of February. I'm getting all my months confused, forgive me guys. One of the books I did not unwrap this month, but was my favorite, and was my buddy read with Danny over at Spinelli Speaks is Famous Nathan by Lloyd, Lloyd Handworker, who is one of the descendants of the original Nathan of Nathan's Hot Dog. This is such a good memoir. I loved learning about Nathan and his immigrant history that brought him to America, how he built up this restaurant empire with his wife, Ida, and then what the role of his children played in the future of Nathan's. I will admit that the middle is a little long, um, but I loved it. I thought it was so fascinating, so much fun and definitely a contender for like one of my favorite books of the entire year. And I'm really glad that Danny enjoyed it. It was my first time buddy reading with her and I was really, I'm, I'm always afraid that people are gonna, like you're gonna love a book and everyone else is gonna be like, that was nice. But she really liked it too. So thank you for taking a chance on it with me, Danny. And I can't wait to hopefully buddy read again with you in the summer. For those of you that don't know, Nathan's Hot Dogs is a legendary hot dog place on Coney Island. A lot of people know it nowadays for the hot dog eating contest, but it has a very rich, history, a very powerful immigrant story, and I really, really recommend you guys enjoy this. It's very nostalgic, and I loved it. Fourth book I read by MFK Fisher, The Gastronomical Me. 
I'm struggling with MFK Fisher. Fisher. She is considered one of the preeminent historical American food writers. So I feel inclined to read all of her work because it's kind of like, I don't know, like not reading, like, um, it's like not reading Harry Potter or not reading the Aragon series or Sarah J. Mass, I guess, in other, other genres. You have to read her, but it was okay. Um, when she talks about food, this is like pockets of essays. So there are some essays that are hits and some that are misses. I find when she talks about food in her childhood or when she's away at boarding school it was much more vivid and much more interesting than when she's with her husband and then later her second husband just gallivanting Paris eating. So it was just okay. Another book uh, that I unwrapped this month was Hog and Hominy by Frederick's Frederick Douglass Opie. This book is about a decade old and I think is a fundamental book. Anyone who wants to learn about black culinary history, this is a book that should be on your shelves. It's very approachable. It's very easy to read. The cover is also just so cool. I have read the history that Opie's covering. I have learned a lot of because I've listened to Dr. Jessica Harris and Frederick Opie also references the fact that Douglas was one of his inspirations and role models for writing this book. So it might not have been new information for me, but I think this was much more appro approachable than Dr. Jessica's, Dr. Jessica Harris's work. So I really recommend this is a fundamental book. If you want an intro like 101 level to food history for black culinary history, this is the book to start with. He's also a professor, which makes a lot of sense. This reads like a textbook, but still has more personal history and like passion infused in it as well, because he is a black man. Final book that I just finished this morning was an ARC that I received from University of Chicago Press and Rakuten Books. Thank you again for sending. This is The Rainbow Palette, and it is about the history of food coloring and how food coloring and the history of science really changed the food world. I'm not going to go into too much detail in this because I want to do a upcoming book duos featuring this book and another book that talks about the impact of food dyes and additives in food in America and globally. So in the month of February, I unwrapped four books and finished four books. For the second half of this video, I have to be honest about what books I've purchased in the past two months. And now I think every month I want to have these kinds of stats. So to recap, I started the year with 85 books on my physical TBR. I've unwrapped 10 so far. I am adding 14 new books to my to be read list. Since the start of the year, I have purchased 16 new books. Two of them are fiction and will not be part of the wrapped TBR. That is The Supper Club and Simmer Down by Sarah Smith. I like having fiction as part of my mood reading. I found February very difficult. I really felt pressured to read certain books and I didn't have any time for a mood read. And that's why for March, which I'll link in the cards above, my March TBR, I only unwrapped two books. And I'm hoping that that makes it a little easier. So again, I'm adding 14 books to my list. I've covered what I've bought in January. I've already wrapped them up to show you guys how accountable I am. And if you want to know those exact titles, you can link in the cards or check out my playlist. So I also purchased one, two, three, four, five, six books in the month of February. These are the books that will also get wrapped and added to the TBR. I got Paper by Mark Kurlansky. I am just trying to read all of Mark Kurlansky's bibliography. And I got this at Open Books for $8. I got a Valentine's Day gift from Dan, which was Driving Over Lemons. This is An Optimist in Spain by Chris Stewart. This is much more food writing and travel. The next is The Devil's Dinner, A Gastronomic and Cultural History of Chili Peppers by Stuart Wilton. I got Sweet Greeks, The First Generation Immigrant Confectioners in the Heartland by Anne Flesser Beck. I have actually not heard a lot of immigrant stories about the confectionery world, and I really wanted to pick this up. Got this at Open Books for $15. The next one is a memoir I've been chasing for a year or two because there's a specific cover, I really, a version of a specific cover that I really liked, which is Shark's Fin and Sichuan Pepper, a sweet and sour memoir of eating in China by Fuchsia Dunlop. So this is, there's a different cover I think that exists, and I just really wanted this one. I got it for $6.50. And finally, this is a book I found the writer 
through Instagram using the hashtag food writing. And this is American Ice Cream, a Danish girl's discovery of independence. It's a memoir, but it's it's a it feels almost like a, a kid's picture books. But that's the size it is. Um, so I'm not sure how long it'll take me to read, but I was really interested. I don't see a lot of food memoirs when it comes to ice cream. So net net. I'm gonna keep repeating myself to keep myself accountable. I started the year with 85 books to read. I unwrapped 10 of them. I'm now adding 14, which means I'm four books worse than when I started at the beginning of the year. That's not great. But my hope is by keeping this kind of tracking record for you guys, that it keeps me accountable. And I also am thinking that I, I don't know. I don't have any more excuses. I'm trying. I promise I am. There was a sale at Open Books where their used books were 50% off. I bought 18 books and sent them to family members and all they say is give to Kim at Christmas. So I also know there's 18 more books coming. So I'm just a terrible human, but I'm trying and I still love reading. And if you're interested in any of these books, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you haven't already joined my bookish family, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I post new videos on Tuesdays and Saturdays, and you can also follow me on Instagram at bookmarks and breadsticks, where you'll also see some of the fun stuff and sneak peeks of the read it and eat subscription box. I hope you're well, wear a mask. Don't become a book addict, I guess. No, do it. There's worse habits to have. Bye.